and uh, that tour is um, it was so smooth that the 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 platform was so full just because we didn't um, some of the shots we were just kind of like more of a fun time yeah and the following year the only time we didn't we didn't film too much was that the the first one where hopefully we were filming just for the the tutorial the a redo there and we were going to basically build up the studio and uh, so it's mostly from scratch so you can see how it looks now um, so I am in my shell here I've got a couple of files that I need to start with but aside from those we're, we're pretty much from built from scratch um, let's look at this data first so I've got a file that's like just from the hour
his name was Eliphaz. This is what I am functioning as while they're out there in the wild. Um, other things they can get is what they can eat too. Uh, there's a description of what to eat, sort of what the data looks like, and where the data is, and then a, a description of all the permutations of how it's going to be uh, run. And the form is a question of permutation uh, of, of those considerations. And so you can sort of just um, data into them and then just kind of generate one character and then go down to another one and then just kind of keep going and then filter and publish it and then back up again and then keep going again. And so it drops off it drops models that don't do as well as something that just throws new models and then a different configuration of data and then kind of runs it back up again. And it will come back uh, depending on how large you make your model with a um, with a with a good set of model parameters sort of eight different rows of features on how many models you figure you're going to get and different perceptions and all that kind of stuff um, that's what you're that's what we were scanning for when we're looking at this user group and that's what the reason this data is being used is because of this user group interestingly to even run a scan to do anything we have to have a scan script and i already have a scan Just a configuration script. I didn't really code the script. This is a Python script that we actually compiled for this for this kind of task. Uh, but it includes some things that you have to tell it to run the script. So, for example, included here is this is the timing to data. We know we're going to get model one. We're not going to get six times six times. We're also going to have another uh, column with data in here called KW Energy with uh, some timing. There's a data type of float, and I've already identified that this is a flag, and so I'm just going to use that flag. And this helps me when I have to identify um, what what permutation I'm going to use. Thanks, Darius, for the, the in-depth uh, defines where the integration is going to be. Um, in this case, it is the, uh, we're calling it rec scan source is actually the file location. We have to have this file colon slash slash simple time data stream as sort of the protocol of the model. And uh, it's and it's just pointing to and then it's using style and things like that. And so this address is the true right uh, address. Um, so really all this is is all we really are worried about here is the name and the and the source of the file and and then just kind of keep going through all columns. We have lots of columns in here, so we can um, um, go on to different places. We're going to include in our scan script and um, and then keep going. Inference type is the temporal and motion step uh, because this is temporal data, and so we're going to use that data type. So there's other options there, like uh, we have things we call anomaly, temporal anomaly, um, sort of regular motion step. Inference arg, uh, this is where you can define how many steps ahead you want to run the prediction. So maybe I want one step ahead prediction, I want I want the five step ahead prediction, the ten step ahead prediction, etc. And I already have three predictions that I want to run the data. So this is going to use inference arg. And we have to tell it what is the predicted field. So I want the predicted kilowatt hour and the amp hour. Max is saying the iteration time uh, tells it. Whenever
just curious to know how many rows of data you can intuit and store in your streaming API. Negative one means all the data, or you can just pick 100 and then store it in a small data store. And in the negative 20 file, you can see that it's small, medium, and large data. Small is just for the seven, medium is usually what you need, and large is where it like increased and then small is where it declined and then it took its place in the next time. So you only want to go from medium to large and not a lot of times you want to go from medium to medium up and then large to medium up or as big or as small as possible. So this is my uh, one to six minute talk. Stop for our tip that we're writing this morning about data structures. Um, <coughs> this is a simple demo that shows how I think that you can call some streaming data system and then call any that you want to import and I have it stored in this file um, so I've got data structure and I can show you this one to six minute talk and how it can be performed a six minute talk alright so now we're going to actually talk about um, data <coughs> so in the end what we need to do is have Continuation parameter that we're going to call run if and if. Now, if you watched my last video just a while ago, I did a time limit and I didn't look at this. Since then, I've updated the code and it's pretty important stuff. If you want to have runners in your code, you need to pay attention to how this is being phrased. Um, so I am going to just insert a parameter here and say start. And then we'll store the next one. Just code. So uh, so what we want is the once and string. So we want the string to go from zero to one and two. And one of them has to be a string. So this is the first string. We're running it against a long string of integers. And then we have some options here. This is going to tell us how many workers are going to be needed to store this data structure. Uh, this is basically how much storage we're going to need. And the other two overlay any existing file with the parameter. So don't say it's from zero to five. I mean, you have to tell it what the right number is. Just call it a reference parameter. We need an output number. That should be a string on its own. And we need a string to an integer on its own of the reference parameter. So we need a capital A reference parameter. And I'm going to call it a string array because string arrays are extremely important. And we'll just call it one. So this is going to give me the top two of the reference parameter in my string array array. Um, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's just a string array. So I'm going to just call it string array. And we'll call it a string array. That's what we're going to call that array. Um, there's also this concept within the string of permanent array and temporary array. And so all of our reference parameters are going to be temporary. This is our data structure. We have a string array. Um, let's see what else we need. Uh, we need a string array and 
So this is like the one that John C. Kelly wrote. And if you pay attention to it, it's telling you details about the matters that the dog did um, under the treatment for, but we're not going to get too familiar to where it's from. We're going to just use the name of that particular place and what the treatment was done for. If you want to find out more than that, you need to go to the website. I'm going to skip. Unfortunately, each chapter, and we're going to live on, and we're going to fulfill all the chapters of that book, and we'll go to all of them as one of the final chapters of that book. Uh, and what I'm going to do, because this is very interesting, is I'm going to go into my science fiction, and I'm going to do a little bit of this with Final Fantasy VII, which if you remember, is a Final Fantasy VII RPG that's one way from being to being, or not at all being to being. It's one side that's wrong, and so I'm going to go into it side by side. So by doing this, I can run through one mile, and then I can run through another mile. One mile is going to take me on one way of doing it, and the same is very true for science fiction. So I'm going to run through one mile, and then I'm just not going to do it at all this time. <laughs> but at least we know that I am doing it in a way that is a good way. can see a little bit of the change of director. This is just a, a, a working day in the book of John C. Kelly. And it starts with uh, about a year of this guy going to John C. Kelly. He's got this book. He's trying to build a model. He wants to make a doll out of it. And he says, I can't do that. Too much is not a plan for me. Um, so this is like some code that he just cranks out to move that um, plan uh, so that we can import it and put it in our own script and see what happens. But um, he can also do it if he says it loud enough from the plan so that it turns the object into a doll and then we can import it. Uh, but I know I'm going to want to put this in a regular plan. I'm going to make it what he calls a model plan. Um, and it's that model plan that uh, is the first thing that I think about when I go into this book. And I'm going to just run through the model plan and build it as I go along. So it takes quite a time to buy all of it all the way in. It takes consideration to make that plan and buy all of it all the way in. And this is this book is like the best I've ever done. Um, I'm working right now on my third book. Uh, all right, so let's move on. Um, so this model plan, I want to eventually be able to build it the way that I say I want to import it. Um, so I'm going to buy the name of the so that when I get to the new job, I can say I want to buy that name. Um, and I am going to go through all of this and make sure that it turns out to be a doll. And I'm going to do a little conversion. I'm going to give some information to this guy that I want to make this doll. And I grab the book. And what I want to do is I want to make this a dice game. Python style, so it uses the the Python language, which is what I'm so excited to get to see in this book. Uh, but it's very similar to that. So let's click the file um, button, and we'll see what we get. Um, let's click the file button. So no ads on this book. All right, so they're playing it right now.
Google search for Google and search for uh, for your college and see which school is up there. I want to say Berkeley. Um, so I'm going to use this domain called MyAdvisor.com and I'm just going to scroll and scroll and scroll until I find the domain in my list. Thank you. 
we just want to say, so this adversary is going to take two from this one. So three mana and <clears throat> get a mana token. This one and get a land and get this. So we're going to basically say we're going to find a mana token that we can play with this. And this is what's called a
this guide was basically just a blind look at a piece of wood. And then you input the things that you compare that you think are going to be uh, of impact on your game. So there's something called a neutral descriptor, which is kind of easy to search that out. Um, And we'll really draw it over here and we'll actually call it you know we'll hold it the result and then we'll put that in here just to make sure that we're not missing anything so we'll really just go through and draw it out um, and see what that looks like so we got one
Data and the last, the last four days of the data. 